Sometimes people lie. Like when you and your buddy are working on the same boulder in the gym, you step in the bathroom for five minutes, come back, all of a sudden he sent the pink one in the corner. Really dude? Every day we go to the same gym, do the same boulders, and every day I take five minutes to masturbate in the gym bathroom and you always happen to send your project? I'm not buying it. But the question is, does this ever happen in pro climbing? Well, apparently it does. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly it does. I'm not, n nobody's suing me, all right? This is definitely one of the most famous climbing controversies and one of the most recent. And it's not really due to the gravity of the situation that it's so famous. It's more just how silly it is. <laughs> like, it's genuinely, a, it's just a pretty interesting and funny story. This story begins with Action Direct, which is one of the most famous rock climbing routes ever. Wolfgang Gulich was the first person to climb it, and it was the first established 9A or 514D. And to make it even more legendary, Wolfgang Gulich died a year later, making this the hardest climb he ever did. And on top of all of this, Action Direct is considered the benchmark 9A, so it's like the standard for 9A. It's a, one of the most important routes that exists in rock climbing. And now that you know a little bit about Action Direct, enter our main character, Saeed Belhaj. Saeed is just a crusher from Sweden who doesn't care about publicity, he doesn't care about the cameras, the fame, Instagram, any of that, he just wants to climb. On his own website, he says, I try to go back to the reason why I started in the first place, the simple joy of moving on rock, climbing beautiful lines, being out in nature with good friends, far away from all the craziness that mankind has developed. That's right, just me, my boys, the rock, about a few $10,000 worth of camera equipment, a crew, an assistant, a tour bus, private jet. jet. You see, Saeed not only wanted to climb Action Direct, but he wanted to be the center of a documentary about it. He had an entire documentary crew going and filming him so that he could have a film about him doing Action Direct, which is kind of weird because he said he, he didn't like that stuff. So now enters our next character, the documentary filmmaker, I'm gonna butcher his name, Hannes Hutch. Hannes is super stoked to film this documentary. He's like, hell yeah, I'm gonna film this documentary. Patagonia wants to buy it. We're gonna make a ton of money, film this cool thing. You're gonna send Action Direct and everyone's gonna be hyped. They get started on this documentary and everyone's waiting. The whole world wants to know, will Saeed send Action Direct? And not too long after, this post goes live. Saeed had officially sent Action Direct. Now, Action Direct isn't the hardest route in the world, but it's still insanely hard. Only 32 people have ever sent it, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> Every time somebody sends Action Direct, it is an iconic moment. Who could forget Stefan's famous ascent, or the time it was sent by Steven, or when Stefano sent Action Direct, or the other time that the other Stefano <laughs> sent Action Direct. There's a lot of variety in the, in the names of people who, who sent this route. So the news is out. Said has become a rock climbing legend. He sent Action Direct. Everybody's waiting for this documentary. He wants to see the footage until an article comes out called Fame is a Stupid Slutty Whore. It's actually called Fame is a Bitch, but it goes a little something like this. Last autumn, Saeed Belhaj claimed the ascent of Action Direct. By this time, I don't believe that he did it, along with a number of other elite climbers. Since my doubts started creeping in, I was always hoping that Saeed would somehow help to solve the questions and therefore the problem. But he didn't. Who would dare have the balls to question whether or not a pro climber sent an iconic router? Now, it does seem a little random, right? Is this just some blog post somebody had? Like, how's there any validity to this? Who even wrote this? Well, the writer of this article was none other than the documentary filmmaker himself. So the guy who filmed the documentary about Saeed doing Action Direct is coming out saying that he doesn't think that Saeed did Action Direct, which doesn't make any sense because he supposedly filmed him doing it. But don't worry, everything will make sense in a minute. So here's the story. Saeed was a million miles away from climbing, even just from bolt to bolt. Damn, <laughs> that's, that's pretty harsh. <laughs> Saeed was a million miles away from climbing, even just bolt to bolt. That's like if, if, if I tried Action Direct right now and like Adam Andra was there, that's how he would describe me trying Action Direct. Like you can't get any worse than that. Now granted, this is just this one dude's opinion. We don't know like how accurate that is, but it, it does seem odd that it's coming from the guy who probably wanted him to send it more than anybody else. But whatever, let's push that aside. There's only one move that really matters on Action Direct anyway, the famous Dino. It's, it is the direct action of Action Direct, the only important part. So, you know, he at least stuck the Dino, right? But more importantly is that he never did the legendary jump. 
Okay, well, hold up. The, the documentary filmmaker was only there like a couple of times filming him. Saeed was working on this all the time. So really, he's not the best person just because he didn't get the jump on a couple of different sessions doesn't mean he'd never done it before. A better person to ask would be Saeed's belayer. The guy who's been with him 24-7, belaying every attempt on Action Direct will truly have the insight we need. His regular belayer that was belaying him during his sessions at Action Direct says he never did the jump while they were there in autumn. All right, things are starting to look pretty bad, but you know, his belayer is not the only one that's been there with him. He also has a photographer. When Ray Dembski took photos of Said, he couldn't do the jump either. Things are not looking good for Said at this point. Basically, everyone's describing him as like a toddler up on the wall. Like he's a million miles away from climbing even just bolt to bolt. He hasn't done the jump. He's got a silly haircut. Not a lot of nice things. Now, if Said was going out to try to send Action Direct, and this was the type of progress he was making, uh, what the hell happened, right? Well, I would assume it was probably his training. And how could he have trained better, you might be asking? With Crimped. This video is sponsored by Crimped. It's a free app that takes rock climbing training to the next level. You wanna get better than all your friends at the climbing gym? Download the Crimped app. Within a week, they'll be so depressed they'll quit rock climbing. And not only does Crimped have all these amazing pre-made workouts, but if you upgrade to Crimped Plus, you get even more features. Imagine Crimped on steroids, HGH Crimped, just big and bulky. You can customize your own workouts. Now I exclusively use my own customized workout, which is called My Workout <laughs> Better Than Emil's. Basically what I did is take Emil's pro rock climbing training plan that is hand tailored to be the best training plan you can have and re-hand tailored it again to make it perfect for me by adding some running, some weightlifting, uh, stuff like that. And the best thing about the Crimped app is all the features it has, because not only does it track your workouts for you so you know what you have to do what day without having to flip through a notebook or something like that, but it also gives you progress updates. You can track your progress on how much better you've gotten in certain events than before. You can change things up. You can take a workout that you like, get rid of some of the parts of it that you don't like, put different ones in. You can do whatever you want. So if you want to try Crimped, click the link in the description below and download the free Crimped app right now. Download the free Crimped app, get Crimped Plus, and send Action Direct. Allegedly. Allegedly. So as of right now, the question is, well, why does everyone think he made the ascent then? If everyone who was there says he wasn't even close and never saw him do it, well, what the hell happened? Saeed went to Spain for five days while he was here in autumn and then suddenly did the route on the day of his return. Interestingly, I sent him a WhatsApp exactly this day and the day before asking where he is, but didn't get a reply until the evening. Hi, had a hectic day, traveled from Catalina and sent action direct today. Damn, that is a hectic day. I mean, I don't know about you. If I if I'd sent Action Direct, I'd probably be a little more hyped than this. This is a rather uh, melancholy tone for, for a text about sending Action Direct. Like, yeah, just took a big dump. And uh, oh, yeah, I also sent Action Direct earlier, the thing that we're filming an entire documentary about, right? You know, the thing that your livelihood depends on. So Hannes then gives us a little bit more backstory on the filming process to kind of show uh, what's even weirder about this whole thing. As I didn't have the time to be on his side all the time, I repeatedly told him, if you feel close to the send, call me and I will film you because it's important for the movie that we're making. I only live 30 minutes by car away from Action Direct. He did not do that. All right, in Saeed's defense, maybe he didn't know. And how's he supposed to know if he's gonna send it or not? Maybe he was like, I'll just do a quick projecting session. Uh, I don't need to go call Hannes. I'll just get some more uh, moves figured out on it. You know, I'm a million miles away from climbing, even just bolt to bolt. There's no way I'll send it. And magically he sticks the dino for the first time and sends the whole thing. You know, I, I can buy that. But Hannes continues to say, if you don't do this, film it at least with an iPhone. I told him many, many times, which is very comfortable at Action Direct, as there's a pedestal on the side that many people use to film themselves. He did not do that. That does seem a bit odd. Now I can't speak for Syed, but I know me personally, if I was the subject of a documentary, uh, you know, about a specific route, I I'd make damn well sure that while I was climbing that route, it was being filmed. And you might be like, well, you know, Syed, he didn't care about that stuff. He didn't care about the publicity. He got dragged along for this documentary. He's all about not being on Instagram, off the grid, living in a cabin, cutting his own wood. But that's where another interesting part of the story comes in. Saeed's the one that approached Hannes in the first place, asking him to make a documentary. This wasn't even Hannes' idea. This was Saeed's idea. He asked for a documentary. Do you have any idea how frustrating that would be as a documentary filmmaker to have some guy approach you about a documentary, gaslight you into thinking that he's capable of climbing the route, and then fuck up every move on the route every time you go to film him, and then just claim he did it off camera, therefore just, just ruining your entire documentary. But wait, that is not the whole story. Somebody, in fact, was filming when he sent Action Direct. 
After sending Hannes the text saying that he had sent Action Direct, he says, Later he told me that there were Czech guys filming him. I asked him if he got the footage. Saeed replied, No, I was too full of adrenaline to ask. Goddamn Czechoslovakians. Is saying Czechoslovakian offensive? I actually don't know. Oh, it's called Czechia now. They have a new name again. They keep changing the name. All right, I'll go with Czechia. Czechia. So what do you call people then? Czechians? Chechnians? I, I should probably know this stuff. Czechs. <laughs> that sounds dangerously close to a racial slur for me. I don't know what it is about it. I don't, I don't feel very comfortable saying that. All right, we got a little off topic, but the point is that there are two Czechs <laughs> in a basement somewhere laughing their asses off watching the footage of Saeed Send Action Direct, allegedly, uh, and not sharing this footage with anybody. I was really disappointed that he didn't call me and didn't reply to my WhatsApp because I was about to make a 20 minute documentary about it. Wouldn't you be really keen on being filmed for free on a route that you have dreamed about all your life? I mean, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. This guy's entire livelihood's at stake, so he's probably a little frustrated that he just spent all this time on something that this guy just clearly doesn't give a shit about because he doesn't care about the publicity or the sponsors even though he's got a website and an Instagram and sponsors and he's making documentaries and he's got the, the, the cool climber dude haircut. So Hannes just decides, fuck it, we'll make the documentary anyway. Uh, just talk about what the ascent was like and we'll talk to some of the people who were there and they can talk about what it was like when you sent it. Uh, let's talk to your belayer. But this is where the story takes a dark, <laughs> hilarious turn. This is the part of the story, in my opinion, this is the best part of the entire story. I thought that his regular belayer, who I know, belayed him on the sending day. So I called him to find out details about the day of the ascent and got to know exactly on the sending day that he was not belaying. What? <laughs> So the guy who belayed Saeed on every attempt on Action Direct just so happened to not be there that day. And the guy whose job it was to film Saeed climbing Action Direct for a documentary also just so happened to not be there. And anyone with a brain who would have thought, this guy's about to send Action Direct, maybe I should film it, just so happened to not be there. Fucking nobody was there. <laughs> said nobody was there. Fucking Saeed wasn't even there. But this is all building to the climax of the story. My favorite part, who belayed him? So I asked Saeed who his belayer was. After 10 days of trying to get an answer, Saeed told me that he couldn't remember the name properly, but his name was probably Mike. He said further, I was in contact with this guy via Instagram, but he seems to have disappeared from Instagram, so I don't have any contact details of him. I only climbed with him twice. I'm sure he'll show up one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll show up one day. I'm sure he'll be back. So this guy is so tight with you on Instagram that you hit him up. He came cross country to Germany, fucking got his belaying equipment out, belayed you on Action Direct, and then within 10 days, deletes his Instagram, sells his house, goes radio silent, and gets his head stuck in a hydraulic press. I gotta say, the story is starting to feel a little unbelievable at this point. I don't know if I really trust Saeed's side of the story. It seems like the deck might be stacked against him. I mean, the only people that can verify that he ever sent Action Direct are Mike and uh, two uh, checks. Mike, if you are real, or either of the two checks that allegedly filmed him are watching this, I will pay you 10,000 American dollars if you send me the footage of him sending Action Direct. I am not kidding. I don't even have $10,000, I will pull out a loan and give you $10,000 for that video. I will sell my fucking car for that video. His story is so ridiculous and obviously untrue that I want it to be true. The, the fact that if this all actually happened this way, I would actually genuinely feel bad for this dude. Like he sent Action Direct under all these wild circumstances and now it, everybody just thinks he's a big fucking fibber. Like I said, $10,000, that's like a quarter million check monopoly monies. So. You know, if you got the video, it might be worth your while. Hannes goes on to say, I don't believe in miracles and it has never been easier to document your efforts on the rock than today. And I've seen a number of climbers doing the moves easily, but they were still miles away from sending the entire route. Combining all these evidences, I simply can't believe in this magic moment, which he claims. This moment where he suddenly does the jump and climbs to the top just like that. This is nonsense and everyone I talk to is thinking the same. This is the second time he mentions other pro climbers agreeing with him, and I found this comment by Daniel Woods about this whole situation. Daniel says, if you are claiming an ascent of an infamous test piece, and it just happens to be one of your hardest ascents, then you better have uncut of that shit. <laughs> I love how hardcore Daniel Woods goes. 
If I had a company with an athlete team and I was paying them to send and inspire, best believe they would be giving me uncut footage of sends. Best believe that shit, Daniel. A photo along with a video is much more powerful than a phrase saying I sent. Sure, you can go out there and say whatever the fuck you want if you're not getting paid, though your dignity might be in jeopardy. Point is, if you're making a living off climbing, your job is to provide media job is to find a photographer videographer to connect with and produce media and if you can't connect with one then go out and buy a gopro and set it up and get some sort of proof it ain't that hard to be honest i would believe having a magical unicorn moment if you had done all the moves and made decent links but not having done the crux along with significant links in a route that is not your style seems fishy to me again Maybe you did send. I was not there, but your story does not line up, so go out there and prove everyone wrong. Again, uncut or it doesn't count. DW, Daniel Woods. That was fucking gangster shit. There you go. Daniel Woods goes hard. Obviously, if Daniel Woods is getting involved, as I said before, it's a pretty big controversy. This was a big deal. So Saeed eventually had no choice but to respond to the allegations. It was just getting too much pressure, too many people talking about it. This is big news in the rock climbing community. This video of Saeed's reaction has 23,000 views, which in the rock climbing community means it's enormous news. That's big news for rock climbers. Now this video is 23 minutes long and it's slow as shit. So I'll just, I'll summarize it for you. Basically it goes like, hey, Saeed, did you send action direct? Yeah, I like long walks on the beach, the smell of fresh cut grass, the sound of rain, you know, just stuff like that. Wow, Saeed, that's super interesting. But uh, did you send action direct? Yeah, I've just been really into Baldur's Gate 3 lately. Some are saying it completely redefines the RPG genre. I mean, I think it might be better than Elden Ring. Answer the question. Yeah, he does not answer shit the entire time. He just deflects any conversation about Action Direct and talks about the most random stuff. So did he send Action Direct? We may never know. Me personally, I think he did it. I think he sent Action Direct. I'm a believer. I believe that Mike is out there somewhere just belaying people up shit. No, really has no... He's what Saeed wants to be. He doesn't care about fame. He doesn't care about Instagram. Mike's just out there helping people send their projects. And remember, if anybody has an actual video, a real video of Saeed sending Action Direct, I will pay you 10000 American dollars. I am genuinely not joking. I will... Uh, not 100000 $10,000 US. Also remember, try out crimps, customize your workouts, do all kinds of cool stuff. Maybe you'll actually send Action Direct. Bring a camera.